Hey folks, it's Doug from It's All Doug and Games, and today we're going to take a sneak preview of the upcoming Heritage Auctions video game signature auction that's happening July 27 and 28. It's a two-day auction. They're going to be auctioning up 372 different games across the two days, uh, and there's a lot of really fascinating items here, uh, so I figured I'd take a look at some of these, uh, give my thoughts, and I'll even put myself out there and make predictions on what I think they're going to go for. So, of course, uh, if I am wrong, feel free to boom roast me in the comments after the auction. Uh, and if you uh, find that I was uh, the video game auction Nostradamus, I'd appreciate the virtual pat on the back and maybe a like and subscribe. <laughs> Let's start with the category I'll call the heavy hitters. Uh, so we're sorting the auction catalog by those that have gotten the most um, pre-live auction bidding action. Of course, you can bid uh, anytime between now and the actual live auction. But we find that most of the bids come in during the live auction itself. Having said that, a gray Nintendo World Championships cart is going to be up for grabs on this Heritage Auction. Uh, it is a WADA 5.0 graded cart. Now, I will say, this is a little bit rough cosmetically. It's denoted that someone uh, used some glue to try and glue the top label down. Uh, so that's cosmetically a little unfortunate. Uh, there's some bubbling of the plastic on the cart. If you look at it up close, so again, uh, it's definitely not one of the finer uh, examples of NWC out there cosmetically, but nonetheless, given the extreme rarity of this game, uh, it's certainly going to get quite a lot of action. I'm going to go out on a limb and make Doug's prediction uh, that this cart uh, will probably yield, with buyer's premium, uh, at or close to $75,000. Well, we will find out later this month uh, if I was... Uh, on the right track or not. The second uh, most active bid item is a Super Mario Brothers 3. It's a sealed copy, a 9.4 A+. Uh, it is a left bros version, which means the bros on the front of the box is uh, oriented to the left uh, of the box. Uh, it is, I believe, a first print copy, so it is as good as it gets. Uh, I will go out on a limb here and predict that this will probably fetch uh, at or about $50,000. This is a desirable game. Uh, and, you know, if anything, I think I might be uh, predicting it a little lower than it ends up going, but we'll see. Um we shall see. Hey, speaking of Super Mario Brothers, uh, the original Super Mario Brothers represented as well in this auction. There are a lot of copies of the original Super Mario Brothers uh, for the NES in this auction, but the uh, most uh, prized copy, according to the pre-bids, is the uh, sealed... Uh, 8.5A uh, copy. It is a has a hang tab. It is a mid-production. So there were 11 print runs uh, of this game that were released. Uh, so this was somewhere around the middle of the pack. I don't know how much higher this is going to get. I think the real action plays mostly on those very first prints with the what's called the sticker seal or the matte sticker seal on the top of the box. Um, this isn't quite that early, uh, but I still think it It'll do well. I don't think it's going to go too much farther. Uh, if you've got that scratch and you want that game, well, I guess you want to jump in the ring on it, as it were. Uh, let's move over to Sega for a bit. There is a copy of Sonic the Hedgehog, the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, and you'll notice when you look at this, almost every copy of Sonic the Hedgehog you see on the box uh, has a not for resale notation on it because the overwhelming majority of Sonic the Hedgehog cartridges uh, were bundled in with the Sega Genesis system. Uh, there were a small quantity of these uh, that were sold as standalone and they were early on in the production. Uh, this is a 9.4 A plus sealed, graded by CGC with the uh, San Francisco early production denotation. So uh, it is currently bid up to fourteen thousand five hundred dollars. So that's seventeen thousand four hundred with buyer's premium. Uh, if I had to guess, I suspect this could get as high as twenty five thousand uh, dollars with the buyer's premium. That will be my prediction on that. Uh, and of course, you know, as we go through these, if you strongly disagree with my assessment, I'd love to 
hear in the comments below uh, what you think about this particular game or this particular auction. So those are kind of, we'll call them the heavy hitters. Uh, I like to look at what I'll call the potential bargains, meaning if we sort the auction by the lowest amount of pre-bidding action, we see some interesting things. Uh, first of all, uh, perhaps the uh, preponderance of the items that haven't gotten a lot of pre-bidding love are Nintendo Power magazines. Now, you know, I think with the Nintendo Power, a lot, an overwhelming amount of the interest is in the very first issue of Nintendo Power. Uh, you know, and that's not dissimilar to things like comic books, where oftentimes the first issue of a, 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 a iconic series or the first appearance of a character uh, is where all the collector interest is. And I think Nintendo Power is no different. Uh, but there are a number of Nintendo Powers, we'll say, you know, within the first uh, 50 or so issues up for grabs. So if someone is hankering a copy of Nintendo Power issue 25 uh, with Battletoads featured on the, on the cover, as of this recording, uh, it has only been bid up to $1. So there you go. Uh, if you want a an, an, uh, shot at winning an item at a signature auction, that might be a, the way to go for you. Now, I could see the Nintendo Powers uh, shooting up into maybe a couple hundred dollars a piece just because it's Nintendo and they're Nintendo Powers. If you wanted my opinion on what might be the true bargain in this auction that probably doesn't get a heck of a lot higher than its current pre-bid, I would put my attention on McDonald's Treasureland Adventure for the Sega Genesis. That's right. Uh, you learn something every day, folks, and you may have just learned that the Sega Genesis had a McDonald's Treasureland game. That's right. And this is a WADA 9.6A sealed copy of that game. It's currently only $11. And I will go out on a limb and predict that someone is going to snag this beauty for under 200 bucks. That's going to be the prediction I have. So mark it down. Let's see how it goes. Uh, of course, a number of weeks back, we talked about and we looked at the big box PC game auction. And I got to tell you, the interest continues continues to build in uh, classic PC games, uh, and it warms my heart to see the original, the first Fallout game uh, for the PC, uh, 1997, uh, a sealed copy uh, graded by VGA. They're generally going to be the folks. They're going to be behind grading any of the big box or PC games. They're really the only game in town for grading those, which, by the way, will be a topic we'll be covering in a future video. Uh, and you can see it here. Uh, you could potentially be the owner of this butte. It's currently bid up to $155. I think it's going to go considerably higher, but it might end up being a relative bargain. Uh, I suspect this is going to be the kind of title that is going to significantly appreciate in the future. Keep in mind, one of these days or years, uh, we are going to see another Fallout game. And every time you see another iteration of an iconic series, especially when those games only come out once every five, Five, six, ten years, you get renewed interest in the that series itself, uh, and we're probably quite a ways away from the next Fallout game. Uh, so, if I was going to invest in a series that I loved, like Fallout, I would be looking to uh, get myself into nice examples of the original Fallout. So, I would suggest that's one you might want to take a look at. Uh, there is a copy for the original Game Boy of the Pokemon Red game. Uh, it is 9.6 A++ sealed, and it is currently only bid at $52. Now, how could that possibly make any sense? You've seen copies of Pokemon Red for the Game Boy go for thousands of dollars. So, ah, well, here's the catch. This is the Latin American version. Uh, right or wrong, I'm not condoning it. I'm just an observer. The reality on the ground is that the uh, North American or NTSC versions of any given game typically command far and away the highest prices at auction uh, compared to their non-North American counterparts. But I got to be honest with you. You take a look at this, and if you're a shelf collector, if you want to have a really beautiful piece to display and you love Pokemon, this will probably be the deal of the day for you. Because look, it is a gorgeous piece. It displays well. And I suspect someone is going to be very happy when they score a Pokemon Red uh, for a fraction 
of the price that the NTSC version brings. Now, what I'd like to look at uh, kind of next here, uh, one of the categories that I love, um, perhaps it's part of my age or, you know, the era I grew up with is the Atari stuff. And let me tell you something, uh, there is some really cool Atari stuff. If you're an Atari guy, uh, in no particular order, there is a copy of Hero, which is one of the most desirable uh, Atari 2600 titles, largely considered one of the best Activision games. And that's saying a lot, considering you're in the company of Pitfall, Kaboom, River Raid, Chopper Command, you can go down the line. Hero is considered one of the greats. Uh, there's a 9.2 A plus sealed copy, and here's the crazy part. It's currently only bid at $76. Now, I will tell you, I am confident that is going to skyrocket during the live auction. It would not surprise me in any way, shape, or form to see that go well over $1,000, possibly $2,000, but you never know, folks. Uh, if you want to pick up one of the all-time greats uh, for the Atari 2600, I'd suggest keeping it on on hero ah in the I really wish I won the lottery category possibly my all-time favorite video game in history was of course adventure for the Atari 2600 heck I named my broadcasting company after it. There's going to be a CGC 9.4 A plus uh, graded copy sealed of Adventure. I can assure you this will go well into the four figures, and rightfully so. It's one of the nicest copies uh, of this game I've ever laid eyes on. And it's got that nostalgic uh, retail store price tag on it uh, from, I believe, uh, Kmart. Uh, I mean, that's just super cool. And you look at that Kmart sticker, it says $16.97 with a line through it. So at some point, they were blowing copies of this game out, uh, probably in the uh, you know mid-80s or so. Uh, and so this copy uh, was obviously taken home uh, and loved by someone and then well, put up for auction. <laughs> uh, so there you go. If I do hit the lottery between now and the 27th, I'm going to be all over that one. Another one of the really interesting titles for the Atari 2600 here is Cubert's Cubes by Parker Brothers. Uh, one of the most difficult to find titles in the entire Atari 2600 library. It is a sequel to, of course, the iconic game Cubert. Uh, for whatever reason, it was printed in extremely small amounts. Uh, I suspect the theory here that I have is that Cubert's Cubes was also an arcade sequel to Cubert in the arcades. Uh, and while I suspect they were hoping that Cubert's Cubes would sell many tens of thousands of units to arcade operators, it sold very, very few. And I suspect the arrangements were already in place for Parker Brothers to do this game well before the arcade version flopped in the marketplace. They printed a few out anyway. On here is an example, a WADA 9.0 A-plus copy, currently at $725, but again, and I have seen personally and heard of transactions where this game goes well into the four figures, not even graded. So I suspect there to be quite a lot of action on this one. And if you'll indulge me to look at just one more Atari game, I promise I'm going to show you something you will almost never see uh, in the wild, in an auction, or anywhere else, and that is Video Life. Now, Video Life was an Atari 2600 game uh, by the company Comma Vid, uh, and this was exclusively offered to customers of this company. Uh, it has an extremely low print run for this. Uh, you couldn't buy it in stores. Uh, it is a 9.4 unopened copy. It's currently bid up to $2,100. I would be very surprised if this does not cross the five to $6,000 mark. Uh, this is something that you, it's hard to even find pictures of it on the internet, much less a copy in an unopened box and graded uh, at a level like 9.4. So uh, this might be one of the hardest to find games in this auction and I say one of because let's pivot back for a moment to the Nintendo world and I'd like to show you something really interesting so here we have a copy of Mahjong uh, 
for the Hong Kong uh, region of the Nintendo Entertainment System. So there were obviously different uh, variants of the Nintendo Entertainment System uh, marketed around the world. Of course, in Japan, it's referred to as the Famicom, the family computer. Uh, but the NES uh, has been, again, marketed and sold around the globe. It's not just in North America. Uh, Hong Kong has uh, a version of Nintendo that's a lot more like what folks in the States will recognize, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, the colors of the cartridges are a little bit brighter gray. Uh, but what's interesting about Mahjong is uh, Mahjong was originally a Famicom game, uh, and it is uh, only uh, available as a Famicom release or in a very limited quantity uh, in Hong in the Hong Kong market. Uh, it is unclear why uh, Mahjong was almost exclusively ported to the Hong Kong console in terms of outside of Japan or why there was such a small, minuscule amount of copies printed. It's the stuff of lore. No one really has an exact number, but it is uh, pretty much universally understood uh, that there have no, been no more than a few copies of this uh, ever unearthed. So uh, this is an extremely, extremely rare title. It is currently bid at $10,000, and it would not surprise me, uh, given the nature of some of the extremely deep-pocketed Nintendo collectors out there, if this thing hit as high as $25,000. I know that sounds crazy. It's a Mahjong game uh, for the Hong Kong region Nintendo, but believe me, it is a holy grail for a lot of the big whales in the Nintendo scene. Uh, it's one of those things where there's going to be a lot of FOMO, fear of missing out. Uh, so I suspect this one to be completely bonkers. Oh, and speaking of Nintendo and things that go completely bonkers, stadium events. There is a copy of the NTSC stadium events cartridge uh, that's going to be up. It's just the loose cartridge. It's not boxed. It is graded at 6.5 by CGC, so it's certainly not the greatest example out there, but it's stadium events. And another example of a game that had a minuscule print run. Uh, it has currently been up to $8,250. I strongly suspect it's going to go uh, quite a bit more. I wouldn't be surprised to see it hit $15,000. And folks, I hope you've enjoyed looking at uh, some of the very interesting items going on at the Signature Auction. Again, July 27th and 28th. Leave your comments below on what you think about the auction, uh, what you think about my predictions, or what you think I left out out uh, in terms of interesting items that deserve more attention. Of course, you're welcome to circle back after the auction and leave your comments below uh, if you want to call out my misses or hits, as it were. Folks, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on It's All Dug in Games.